Have you ever found yourself just scrolling? Only to look up and realize that what was supposed to be five minutes has somehow turned into an hour? That each swipe, each like, is doing more to your mind than you could ever imagine. This isn't just about distraction. It's about manipulation, addiction, and the psychological toll of living in a digital world. Hey, Factful Finders, welcome back to Factful Finds, the channel where curiosity meets wisdom. So, what actually happens to us after just a few minutes on social media? You pick up your phone, open Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or any of your favorite platforms. Within seconds, you're scrolling, liking, tapping, and suddenly feeling that small burst of pleasure, that little rush. That's dopamine at work, the brain's reward chemical. But here's the twist. Those tiny dopamine hits are precisely how you become addicted. Every like, every comment, every new post from someone you follow is designed to give you that quick spike. And it's no accident. Social media companies use these dopamine triggers to keep you engaged. And they know exactly how often to give you that reward to keep you hooked. But think about it. What happens when you get dopamine hits for the most mundane things? When even a single notification can give you that small rush? Over time, this can lead to something called micro-addictions. Small compulsive behaviors that feel innocent but are incredibly hard to break. And these small behaviors are rewiring your brain, training it to expect constant stimulation, constant rewards. In social media, we look at people who seem to be doing better than us, and we start to feel like we're falling behind. But here's the kicker. A lot of what we're seeing isn't even real. Filters, staged photos, carefully crafted captions. It's all curated to look perfect. Yet our brains fall for it. We compare our reality to someone else's highlight reel. And after just a few minutes of scrolling, we're already starting to feel the weight of that comparison. Imagine the damage done over hours, days, and years. Social media is supposed to connect us. But ironically, for many people, it's making us feel more alone. Just a few minutes online can give us a false sense of connection. A few likes, a couple of comments, maybe a quick message. And what's even more concerning is that studies are showing a rise in loneliness and social isolation, especially among younger people. We're more connected than ever, but we're also lonelier than we've ever been. Now let's get into something a bit more sinister. Privacy. Every time you're on social media, you're not just posting and scrolling, you're being watched. Social media companies are collecting data on you, what you like, what you click on, how long you spend on each post. Just a few minutes on social media is enough to tell these companies an incredible amount about you. And this data is valuable. So valuable, in fact, that it's sold to advertisers, often without you even knowing. And then there's the issue of manipulation. Social media platforms aren't neutral. They're designed to keep you engaged for as long as possible. They'll show you whatever content achieves that goal. Sometimes this means promoting divisive, emotionally charged, or even misleading content because it captures attention. After just a few minutes, you could already be exposed to manipulated content. Whether it's political propaganda, fake news, or sensationalized stories, these platforms have a way of feeding us information that aligns with our biases, polarizing us further and fueling outrage. So next time you see a headline that seems too outrageous to be true, remember, it might just be designed that way. After all, Anger and outrage are powerful ways to keep you engaged, and social media companies know that. Studies have found that prolonged screen time, especially at night, interferes with our circadian rhythms, making it harder to sleep. And when you lose sleep, your mental health suffers too. So now that we know what's happening to us, what can we do about it? It's not about quitting social media altogether, but rather about finding balance. Set daily limits on how much time you spend on each app. Dedicate time and space in your day to be without screens. Make a conscious effort to engage in face-to-face -face interactions whenever possible. So the next time you pick up your phone, remember, it's not just a screen, it's a tool. It can help you stay connected, but it can also pull you in ways that you don't want. Let's make a conscious choice about how we engage with this digital world. Until next time, stay factful.